you can see that like a, you're looking for the honeycomb yeah, structure yeah in the inside here through the wheels you can see uh like structures yeah honeycomb they right? call the, the webbings okay so that is a cast part today we've got kelvin a tesla model y owner for how many months now four four to five months four to five months and we're going to talk about a concern that some people have where people have this perception that when a tesla gets into an accident because tesla uses the giga casting that means instead of 70 individual parts it's one big part that it's harder to repair the car it may even be total so we're going to take a short walk here in gamuda cove amazing starbucks here for a hot sunny friday morning and gamuda cove is home to the largest tesla charging site in southeast asia we've got 18 destination chargers we've got 11 superchargers right behind us kelvin's model y is behind my model 3 is behind and a few more owners are behind as well so kelvin let's kick it off with this perception people are saying that if a tesla gets into an accident really got to total the whole car or can't be repaired already what's the reality i think <clears throat> um some of them think that it's hard to repair well i don't uh i don't deny that it's hard to repair but it's not impossible to repair so why is it hard it's because the uh, giga casting part is one piece so people have the perception that if uh, a part the the one uh, small part of the casting part is uh, broken or damaged you have to replace the whole part which is actually not true so if we one were to go into the service manual and look into what uh, what kind of damage uh, the giga casting part has suffered you can actually do uh, certain uh, repairs on that part instead of replacing the whole thing and you talk about giga casting so like your model wise is there one or two casting mine has uh, one at the rear okay so one casting behind that means in the back instead of 70 different parts that's all just mostly into one giant part but for the model trees it's also one in the rear is it I think Model 3 does not have the Giga casting part yet. Okay. Yeah, if I'm not mistaken. Okay, so this may be more of a question for the Tesla Model Y. So my can, Model 3 is down there. You can actually identify it from the when you look through the wheels. How do you see? Are you able to show us? Like yeah. We just go down to this side, for instance. Depends on how the the lighting is. So, so if you look into the the wheel arc, you can see that. Like a, you're looking for the honeycomb yeah, structure. Yeah, in the inside here, through the wheels, you can see uh, like structures. Yeah, honeycomb, they right? They call the, the webbings. Okay. So that is a cast part. Got it. Yeah, so, so if you look, look into model your model tree, it's hard to see. And you, can't, you, you don't see that kind of uh, structure. I don't. So yeah, from, even from here, you see that this is... This part here, you see there's a, there's a bolt and there, there are weldings. Yeah. So it's not the cast part. Okay. So maybe we can overlay it on the... Hearing from you is that even though there's a giga cast, is one part, there's still some degree where it can be repaired. Yes. Of course, in a very serious accident, the car is total. But then yes. that's also going to be the case for an ICE car, right? Exactly. It's, it will be the case because if, if the structural uh, part that is supposed to absorb the load or to protect the cabin is damaged, it's not uh, advisable to repair anymore. Okay. So you still have to total the car. And Giga Casting, while well, Tesla started it, they're not the only one to do it. Xpeng also recently, they have a showroom in Singapore, they're saying that they're doing Giga Casting as well. I think Zika also doing Giga Casting, more and more brands are doing it. What's creating this perception that Tesla's are harder to repair? Why Tesla specifically? I think because they are the first to uh, come to the mass market with the giga casting so uh, all the eyes are on them to to show that is it uh, is it difficult or is it impossible to repair so even tesla is also learning from that process so they have discovered that uh, although it may be uh, harder to repair but it's not impossible to repair and this kind of information flow has to also flow to the insurers okay. so the insurers are starting to learn because when there are insurers works on data so if there are there's no data they always go to the conservative part because when the repair estimates come and there are not enough skilled uh, labor or not enough uh, information on how to repair they will just write it off because the cost is always higher if you if you were to go and do repairs Good so no as way. as uh, as time goes on when more people are able to uh, repair the casting parts and more people 
are uh, well informed that actually you can repair certain parts of the giga casting so then the cost will come down and then it will likely go to parity or even might be better than Very the than the stem parts you'll find a link in the video description just from tesla's guide on to what extent a giga cast can or cannot be repaired there's some guidance to workshops to third parties yes. as well to their own employees tesla's like this small tree on our right mine and like kelvin's model y on our left they have the highest safety rating in the world when you think about the structure that the Tesla is built in and also that the bottom, that, that skateboard of batteries which is half the weight of the car, mm. when there's a serious accident, what's the difference for a passenger in an EV compared in a traditional ICE car? Um, for, for a traditional ICE car, usually it's a bit uh, not so bottom heavy. So the, just from the physics aspect, it's uh, more prone to roll over and to uh, to serious accidents. So, for a, for an EV where it's bottom heavy, so usually it's more stable. Mm. But of course, it all there's a lot of factors involved in 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 accidents. Mm. Um, I would say look at the data and not have the uh, perception that if uh, a Tesla goes into accident, it means every Tesla is is not safe. It's the same with ICE as well. If you see a, an ICE vehicle uh, in an accident, you cannot say that all ICE vehicles are, are inherently dangerous. So it all depends on how it's being designed, how, um, how the car manufacturers work. And I'm sure that every car manufacturer wants to move forward and keep their customers safe. I agree. We will continue to demystify this. If you have any questions, or concerns about owning an EV or a Tesla, let us know down in the video comments. It's great to see you here in KL, Kelvin. Nice yeah. to meet you as well, again. And just learning a little bit more about what makes owning EV great. Here in Gamuda Cove, again, you see so many destination chargers down there, 18 stalls, so many superchargers behind us. Come visit. We look forward to sharing with you some exciting events happening here in the future. If you found this video useful, please click the like button. You can also follow Kelvin on X and click subscribe to stay updated to more videos on Tesla. Signing off from Gamuda Cove here in Malaysia. Bye-bye.